So I was reading this paper the other day and was very surprised to find that the father of psychosomatic medicine himself said that certain emotions affect certain organs when they're stressed. So excessive anger, excessive worry, excessive sadness affect certain organs in a predictable pattern. Now this blew my mind because this is very much what for thousands of years Chinese medicine has noticed and why emotional states were specifically allocated to specific organs and specific symptoms that could demonstrate when they were breaking down what organ was out of balance. Now in this video, I wanna share a very, very interesting exercise that has helped me understand when stress is coming from, where it's coming from, and how I can fix it in order to help heal myself. Hey, I'm Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. Now don't forget, I've included the first link below is for a free PDF on five daily rituals that can possibly help you add 10 years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. Check it out right there, first link below. So this idea of emotions being associated with certain organs that they affect or they damage, or even organs when they're pathologically affected or disease themselves can then produce those emotions is very, very fascinating to me. You know, a good example is anyone who's ever had a panic attack or anyone who's ever had a heart attack, or anyone who's had pericarditis can share this experience of intense dread, like one is feeling like one is dying. It's a very, very common emotional state associated with pathological, like structural heart illness. If you're having an MI, you're having a heart attack, and you are dying, it's interesting how consistent of a reported sensation people feel. The same is true of people who wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. This feeling of intense dread, I think I'm dying, this is it. And then finally, pericarditis and other afflictions that affect the heart. Now I think this is really, really interesting because in many different ways, you can associate certain emotions to certain organs in Chinese medicine. You can say, for example, anxiety and worry is associated with the spleen pancreas primarily digestion, but also anxiety and worry are also associated with the heart. You could even say, because the emotion or the emotion of fear, which is typically associated with the kidneys, and we know that physiologically, you could say the kidneys and the adrenal glands, closely linked. So excessive fear puts one in fight or flight and affects HPA access. So it's really interesting to me to understand these patterns of stress hormones, emotions, and the organs that are affected. But this is why it's very, very interesting and important to me. The first thing is that you can learn how your body and your physiology breaks down uniquely under stress so that you can recognize when it is coming and when you're really setting yourself up for a doozy in terms of serious illness down the line. So for example, people tend to break down in predictable ways. Let's say you're more of the anxious, nervous type. In Chinese medicine, worry or pensiveness or overthinking is associated with the spleen pancreas. So you worry too much. If you're excessively working while eating, you're also affecting your digestion in that same way. If you're just in general a worrier, then you're also affecting your digestion in that way. And we know even from studies that people who even listen to a radio while eating secrete less pancreatic enzymes, less digestive enzymes. Pretty cool. Everyone knows the feeling, though, of being deeply emotional over something and having a knot in your stomach and not wanting to eat. So these kinds of correlations are often really easy to observe. They're not like some great mystical mumbo-jumbo. They're usually very clinical. So let's go back to this spleen type again, for example. This kind of person, when they are excessively stressed, may lose their appetite altogether, may lose weight without trying, may have problems with insomnia, specifically sleep onset insomnia, can take them hours to fall asleep. They may struggle with bloating, low or no appetite, constipation, or loose stools. So this is a very predictable and extremely generalized kind of uh, somatotype, for lack of a better word, and how this kind of person breaks down. Now, another type may be something that we associate historically as like a livery type, right? Someone prone to agitation under breakdown, anger, being short, Maybe uh, if you're female, maybe it changes in menstruation. Maybe you're also waking up at 3 a.m. These are very consistent uh, liver patterns and a very TCM way to look at these patterns of breakdown. But this is another example of a consistent way 
Some people break down. When they're under stress, they don't get sad. They don't get worried. They don't buckle down. They get agitated, which is different from other people when they're put under a lot of pressure or they're put under a lot of stress. Now, why is this so useful? It's useful because you can then begin to track how you respond to stress in a constitutional or unique way. You know, for me, when I respond to stress, it's exceptionally rare for me to feel sad or cry. It just doesn't really happen that much. But I very much get a lot of digestive problems and I get prone to agitation. So when I start to experience a lot of overwhelm in my work life or overwhelm in my personal life, what tends to happen? I tend to lose appetite. I tend to not want to eat. I tend to get indigestion easily. I tend to get constipated. And I can get insomnia, that pattern I mentioned previously. And so I know now, huh, am I... Have I been having kind of a really low appetite this week? I haven't noticed myself eating that many meals. Have I been missing days of bowel movements? Have I been feeling like I'm just not, I'm getting this fragmented light sleep? Maybe it even feels like I'm not sleeping at all. These are all my canaries in the coal mine. So then I can know if these eight signs are my warning signs, they're like my physiology's unique manifestation of depression or anxiety. I know this is my scorecard. I have to watch closely my sleep, my digestion, my bowel movements, essentially. And as long as those are okay, I know that that, the canary is not singing. I know that everything's okay. But that's what I watch out for. For other people, it may be completely different. They may overeat and easily gain 20 pounds. That almost never happens for me. They may also experience intense sadness or feelings of depression. That almost never happens to me. So it's so valuable because you're coming up with a unique to you understanding of how stress affects your physiology and what specific organs are even affected. So that, again, it's not just this generic feeling of stress. Not everyone has problems sleeping when they're stressed. Some sleep great, sleep even longer when they're stressed. So by understanding your unique constitutional type, your unique breakdown, you can then know that and then be prepared for it and then dial things back in your life. So this idea that unique emotions and unique stressors affect a very specific organ system in most people in Chinese medicine. When they're getting broken down and stressed and overworked and there's too much and they can't take it anymore, that's very, very useful to know. So you can understand your symptoms, where they're coming from, and kind of find that path back to healing. I hope that helps. Before you go, again, check out that link below, which is for our free guide, five daily rituals that can possibly help you add 10 years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And then I have a video on this exact topic right over here.